a lot of people switching parties and things are up in the air, folks. Anyway, I've got more for you. Hang in there because we need to talk about someone who blew the whistle and didn't live to regret it. Hey everybody, this is Dab with Truthification Chronicles, and I wanted to just give you an overview, first of all, of the people that have been to these rallies this past week. Well, we have, first of all, in Arizona, the Phoenix Rally. Look at this. They had 67,000 tickets that were put out, 29,000 voters identified, and 87% of them were from Arizona. 26% didn't vote in 2016. 26 percent and 18 percent of the people were democrats now you know you have to wait in line to get into a trump rally so if you're not serious about hearing him i don't think you would waste the time to do it so 18 percent of democrats are so against the democratic party right now that they are willing to stand in line to wait and see trump isn't that amazing? Oh, and check this out. This is for Colorado, 71,000, almost 72,000 tickets and 38,790 voters identified, 94% from Colorado, 19% didn't vote in 2016. And you know, there's 7,000 voters. That's a lot of people. And 17% were Democrats. Again, big numbers that's amazing to me and then this was the las vegas one and fifteen thousand voters identified 32 percent didn't vote in 2016 that's four thousand voters and 27 percent blacks latinos or non-whites 18 percent democrat i'm telling folks things are happening people are switching parties why because of things like this yes it's true Ties at the Nevada caucus precinct locations will be broken by using a deck of cards. Serious, if you're a Democrat, do you really want this to be how your party handles things? Oh, and these people want to be in control of our government. Please tell me this is not true. Well, hang on here, folks, because unfortunately, not everyone is going that direction. There are a couple people that I just found out that are planning on voting for the Democrats. So let me show you who they are. The first one was Clint Eastwood. Guess what? Yeah, he wants to support Michael Bloomberg. Yay. I mean, serious? Clint, Clint, what you doing? And didn't see this one coming. Well, me neither. I really did not expect him to do that, especially since Michael Bloomberg is like very anti-gun. So that was very saddening. And this one probably is going to rank right up there with, I can't believe you just broke my illusion of this person because it kind of happened to me when I saw it. Look at this. Guess who's supporting Bernie? Dick Van Dyke. Yes. Serious, folks. Dick Van Dyke. Now, if you're a younger person, that probably doesn't mean a whole lot to you, really. But for anybody who is, you know, 50s and up, you remember him quite well. And I just, I, I'm stunned. Yeah. And when you watch this ad, you will just be like, what? No. How? 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 <laughs> so, yeah, of course, he has never changed his attack because of pressure from the outside or when he felt the wind was blowing another way. He stuck with who he is and what he believes. Yes, he's a socialist. He's always been a socialist. He wants to be a socialist. That's what he wants. He wants to turn the United States into Venezuela. Why would you want that, Dick? You're old enough that it should be common sense. And he says, I don't know why people in my generation don't want to vote for him. Well, duh, it's because people in your generation, for the most part, have seen what communism and socialism do to countries. And they don't like it. They don't want it to happen here. So I don't know where you were. Were you too busy dancing around on stage? Were you too busy doing your little TV shows or whatever? But you've missed out, sir. 
if you don't know the damage that socialism can do to our country. So, I don't know. That really kind of broke my heart, I got to tell you, folks, because I always thought he was a pretty smart man. Now I know he's not. So, anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Sorry for breaking your illusions. I know it has to happen sometimes. But I also wanted to point out to you this. Um, Sarah Carter was talking about Phil Haney. Now, you may have heard already because it was on the Fox News. Uh, they had this that came out. And yes, the man passed away. How he passed away? Well, there are various stories. So, um, anyway, Sarah Carter says somebody I deeply respected and considered a friend, Phil Haney, a DHS whistleblower during the Obama administration, was apparently killed yesterday in Southern California. Pray for his family and pray they find the person who murdered him, still trying to get confirmation on details. Now, that was at 11.09 a.m. on February 22nd. Well, then... Uh, like I said, by the time this came out, and this was also on the 22nd, but it was later on in the day, they are saying it was self-inflicted. So uh, it's kind of up in the air. He was 66. Just thought I'd point that out. And uh, the guy was somebody who really put out a lot of information about what was going on in the Obama administration. Now, here's an article, actually, from The Hill back in uh, 2016. And at that time, this is what he claimed, that DHS ordered me to scrub records of Muslims with terror ties. Yeah. And if you read this article, it is just so eye-opening. You're sitting there going, holy schmoly, this is not good. And this is what was being done. So this guy, I mean, I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not going to say one way or the other. I just think it's an interesting event that everybody should know about right now. And I'm going to leave this article down below for you so you can read it. All of the links for this will be down below. I'm sorry that I don't have the energy to really read them all, guys. Tonight, I spent all day with my parents helping them watch the um, Indiana State Wrestling Finals. And so I'm really exhausted and I wanted to get it out as soon as I found it. Uh, but um, yeah, I just, yeah, not enough of me to go around. And my computer was what we were using to stream the uh, thing onto their TV. So I couldn't do that. But anyway, unfortunately, our couple of guys didn't win. But uh, we ended up with a third place and an eighth place. But that's okay. We had a couple of them. So it was good. You know, always good to get a state medal. So again, really sorry. But I will leave all the links down below. This article right here is a must read. Please take time to read this, okay? Remember, it'll be in the description. You just have to click like a little triangle or something that will pop that open. And then you'll be able to find the link down below, okay? So I want to thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you all later.